Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today online. Uh, this is episode 54, and today we're going to be talking about intelligent communications with Skype for Business and Microsoft Teams. If you're joining us live and tuning in, we're actually leveraging the Skype meeting broadcast technology, and this enables you to stream live from your organization up to 10,000 viewers. So I encourage you, if you're an Office 365 customer and you'd like to try it out, you can actually go to uh, broadcast.skype.com and start logging in. If you have a subscription, uh, you can uh, automatically use that. We get a lot of questions from our viewers on actually how do we produce this show and um, what kinds of equipment we use. And one of the big questions that I get is, hey, my CIO or my CEO wants to do a town hall for his large employees. And so what we're gonna actually do in a couple weeks is take you behind the scenes here at Microsoft Studios and, help, and show how we do such as Q&A, and we're also going to show you how we do this broadcast. So um, tune in to that episode in a couple of weeks. And if you're watching us on demand, uh, we are on YouTube, and so we play all our episodes on uh, aka.ms slash Teams on Air replay so definitely check us out there if you um, are like if you want to watch this episode on demand or any of the other episodes that we've produced and you can certainly uh, check it out make sure you subscribe and if you subscribe to the channel um, you'll get a notification that our videos is live and if you like the video make sure you hit thumbs up all right so with that I want to introduce Lori Wright Lori thank you for joining us today great to be here thanks for having me Thank you. Uh, Lori is the general manager of Skype, Skype for Business and Microsoft Teams, and she owns uh, the marketing strategy, partner strategy, and branding strategy, and so you're, and you're doing a great job. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's very nice to hear on Friday morning. Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, you have an impressive background. You've been in, uh, in, the, in, in the technology industry for a long time, but I think the most interesting part of your background is where you started. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. So, you know, I started my career, I think I probably broke some child labor laws <laughs> because my, my dad had me come in to uh, work at his office when I, I actually started, I think I was probably eight or nine. And then into middle school, I would go in every day after work or after school yeah. into his office. And uh, my job was to answer the phone. So he had a family business. He owned an electrical contracting company. Mm -hmm. And I would go in after school and I'd sit behind the reception desk and answer phones. And so the phone would ring. And this was way before the days of caller ID or anything <laughs> that actually would tell you who was on the other end of the phone. And I would answer it, and then I would like take one of those little memo notes. Do you remember those, those yeah. little memo pads? Uh, and I would jot down a note, and then I'd get up out of my chair, and I'd walk it over and set it on the desk of whoever it was for. Uh, and I did this all day long, every day. And what I realized when we were going into Ignite last week, I was like, gosh, that made me the original unified communication. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so I've been in this business for a long, long time. Great. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you mentioned Ignite, and Ignite, you had a general session, you and Bob Davis, um, and you guys announced, uh, first of all, I want to say that there was just so much work put into that, and I'm still recovering from <laughs> not only all the work that went in, but the week, but just all the positive energy um, um, that was revealed during your general session. So, if you wouldn't mind, would you just kind of telling us what are sort of like the big things that you discussed during that? Absolutely. Ignite was a huge moment for us, and you're absolutely right that it you know, was something that a whole bunch of people spent a lot of time and energy into. And we were really happy with being able to get to tell our story there because we've had such a great story forming over the last couple of mm -hmm. years, and it really did all culminate at Ignite for us to be able to share with the world what we were actually thinking. So, you know, a lot of our announcements at Ignite were to lay out our new vision for something we call intelligent communications. And what that is, is that's the next phase of unified communications. It's bigger than just tying the technologies together, but it's about more now, how do we infuse intelligence and let technology be able to do things that weren't previously before possible to empower people and teams around the world to do more. Yeah. And so what we announced there was that we were going to be taking the capabilities that exist within Skype for Business 
and bringing those into Microsoft Teams and elevating Microsoft Teams to be the new hub for teamwork. And this is a central place for people to do all the things that they need to do to collaborate effectively mm -hmm. within a team across many different applications. Yeah. And a big part of that is the calling and meeting experiences. When you think about 80 to 90 percent of the time that people spend in the office is spent either in a meeting, on a phone call, or an email, that this is where the bulk of work happens. And yeah. so we need to bring those calling and, and uh, meeting experiences in to that hub for teamwork. And so that's what we announced at Ignite. Yeah. It was, uh, in my opinion, I've been in this, you know, on this team for a long time, uh, a decade plus. <laughs> and, you know, we've been on unified communications journey, but I feel like this has been a game changer in terms of what we're able to do now that we have cloud compete computing software, you know, software as a service with Office 365 with big data and artificial intelligence. So, um, that, you know, from my perspective, it's been pretty awesome. So, but why are we doing this and sort of what benefits do the customer get out of all bringing all these experiences together? Yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's a ton of benefits, but it really, like, if you think about just the highest level benefit, it's just bringing these things together. What we want to do is clear up any confusion around, well, when do I go to this application or when do I go to this application that we really do see this need for the applications to be one. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's one huge benefit. But then more importantly, it's really around the whole notion of what what is now possible? What's the art of the possible that we can do? Yeah. And that needs to be on a new foundation. And so for us, it's really about how do we now take and create this brand new foundation for being able to have an infrastructure that can scale. You know, today we have three billion minutes happening every single day on our global Skype network. Yeah. And so what we want to be able to do is be able to innovate faster, continue to deliver better quality experiences. And so we can do that now within Teams by bringing it together. That's another big reason we really wanted to modernize that, that architecture. And then the third thing is really thinking about, well, the power of the Microsoft graph. So lots of people talk about this notion of you know, artificial intelligence and you know, cognitive services mm -hmm. and all of these technologies, and they're now becoming real. Like we really are living in a time when these technologies are going to change the way we work and the way that we live. And so what we were wanting to do with that is to say, we have the power of the Microsoft graph, all of these data and insights that are coming out of over 100 million plus yeah. users on Office 365. How do we surface those up and let that now be the thing that helps drive what file do I need at this moment in time? What person should I be talking to? Right. How, who should my action items be distributed to? Those types of rich intelligence are now possible within Teams. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, it, you and the rest of the team's leadership team um, have laid out an awesome vision and I would actually love to bring them all here, but I couldn't bring them all here. So um, to help kind of talk about this vision a little bit more and you can get the perspective of others, we've actually uh, have a video that we'd like to show you. So um, uh, please cut to the video. Unified communications is a term lots of people talk about, and it's been around, gosh, since the mid-90s. Microsoft thinks about unified communications beyond just how we tie everything together, and really now how we create intelligence in those experiences. AI, machine learning, and just big data in, in general is fundamentally changing collaboration. Uh, and we see it inside of, of teams to help users sort through what's most important to bubble up what needs their attention. Microsoft has made the decision to bring together Skype for Business and Microsoft Teams into a single hub that's part of our Office 365 suite. We saw the power of Microsoft Teams in bringing teams together to communicate in a team environment. But we saw them also want to seamlessly communicate, being able to call and meet with those same people as they chat in Microsoft Teams. And there was a great opportunity to bring communications and collaborations together. For one thing, it will simplify 
things for customers. Again, instead of having multiple tools to get their job done, they can do it in one place, one hub for teamwork. But I'd say it's more than that. What you're getting is the ability to use intelligent communications in a way you've never been able to do before. For example, as you schedule meetings, we have the opportunity to recommend people who should attend the meeting based on other people in your project team or people that you've been chatting with about that topic. People really want to have much more expressive communication. And one of the things that we've tried to do with collaboration in teams is build in the set of features whereby a group that has adopted teams, they enjoy working with each other more. One thing that I've learned is that you should never underestimate the change management required when taking a customer from one environment to the next. And this is no exception. And we are committed to empower our customers with good information about this change. We currently have about 100 million users in Office 365. And I'm very excited in terms of having every one of those users and those customers use Skype for Business and Teams together in this new solution. There's no company better positioned to be able to take this moment forward and be able to really redefine the way that unified communications happen and bring this intelligent communications to light. All right, thanks. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you'd like to learn more about this vision, we've actually created an ebook for you. And the ebook has uh, is called The Five Essentials of Unified Communications. It shows some of the trends that are going on in, in unified communications, and it's a great resource for you to download as well as um, share with some of your colleagues if you want to learn more. So I encourage you to check that out. You can check that out at aka.ms slash um, five essentials of UC. All right, so now we're going to switch to the Q&A portion of it. We do have live Q&A going on, and um, I'm, we're going to try to answer as many questions as we can. Um, but now, um, so if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A manager. And if I don't get to your question, I'm sorry, because we just don't have unlimited time. But you can follow me on the Microsoft Tech Communities, and feel free to drop me a question there um, after the show or um, we'll try to summarize some of the questions that were really important but not be able to cover it and we'll post a blog sometime next week. All right, so Lori, the first question that we have for you is that, um, um, and I, I saw this a couple of times in the manager, is that uh, they're kind of confused. Is Skype for Business going away or is it staying? Great question. Yeah. The, the answer is that we see Teams as the future platform that we will continue to be innovating most significantly around and that we believe is going to be the right place for our customers to get to eventually. We have, uh, it will be going away at some point, Skype for Business within Office 365. So for our cloud connected Office 365 customers, there will no longer be a Skype for Business client at some, some future point down the road, and we've not set a date for that. However, we are continuing to innovate in Skype for Business on-premises. We've announced a new vNext of Skype for Business server that's going to be coming out in late calendar year next year. Uh, and so for on-premises customers, Skype for Business remains. Good. Yeah, so there's no change. Skype for Business is going here. It's going to power the experiences in Teams. And so um, if people have made investments in Skype, they should continue to feel good about that investment. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, the next question that I see is that we've recently rolled out Skype to all our users, but not all our users are ready for Teams. And I heard that you're going to force all of us to move. Why? <laughs> that is that is not accurate, and so I want to make sure that we dispel any any myths or yeah. uh, pre, uh, misconceptions around that. So our plan is not to force customers to move to Teams. That mm -hmm. is not the principle by which we're operating. Our hope and uh, uh, activities are set around being able to give enterprises and companies of all sizes, quite frankly, the tools that they need in order to move their users when it is right for them. Yeah. And that is really what we're looking to do, is to say, to be very open with, here's where we are in our development of you know, the, the roadmap, and then help customers determine when is the right time for them to move. 
and then when they make that determination, be there to help and support them. Yeah. And so we have not set any sort of date for forcing customers yeah. to move. That's great, and I, you know, it was a big question that came up a lot at Ignite. A lot of customers would ask, and so there is no such plan, and we just want to make sure that that's absolutely uh, clear. Um, all right, so that's good. Uh, oh, here's a good one. We recently rolled out Skype. Oh, excuse me. Uh, we have a lot of conference rooms with Skype room systems. Is this compatible with Microsoft Teams? Our plan is to take all of the investments that people have made mm -hmm. and be able to make those compatible with Microsoft Teams. So anything around Skype room systems, we will absolutely work with teams and in fact we just announced a new partnership with Lenovo who's also going to help continue to build Skype room systems going forward and yeah. that will connect with teams as will our previous partners. Yeah, so we have a continued commitment, you know, we're actually expanding the family <laughs> for Skype room systems and hopefully you know, soon we'll be able to be compatible, so That's not exactly. to worry. Yeah. yeah, so both, you know, Logitech, not both, but Logitech, Crestron, uh, Polycom, they are all great partners to continue to build there, and then now we have Lenovo. Perfect. All right, um, another question is, um, what's the plan for video interoperability with uh, support for Teams meetings? Video interop is a huge need and it's something that I think, you know, when we look at where we know the teams will continue to play in the future, that being able to connect up wherever you are is of critical importance. And so this is an area we're investing a lot of time in and really looking to strong partnerships to help us deliver that. So that was another big announcement we made at Ignite that we announced partnerships with both BlueJeans Network as well as PEXIP in addition to the work that uh, Polycom has already been doing with us around video and roll. Cool. Yeah, so, you know, all those legacy uh, BTC investments that customers have, well, you know, they can anticipate having, um, being able to connect those experiences with Teams meetings and that should um, be that would be great, right? <laughs> so, you know, like if you have those investments, we actually have an episode that we did with PixUp a couple weeks ago. We also did an episode with Polycom. So if you want to learn more about what the existing investments are, you can check out that episode on um, aka.ms slash Teams on Air replay. Uh, and they gave great overviews of their solutions and we hope that you check it out. So, but again, like what Lori said, that those investments will continue to exist. Um, another question is uh, about the cost in terms of licensing. Um, will there be some cost to adopt uh, teams as a result of bringing all these experiences together? No, I mean, that's another just great benefit of being as part of the Office 365 family is there is no additional licensing cost. If you're a Skype for Business customer, mm -hmm. all of your licensing will work exactly the same way in Teams. Yeah. So, and for any customer who has Office 365 today, you have access to Microsoft Teams. And so we're very much encouraging all of our Office 365 customers to give Teams a try, whether it's in a small pocket in your organization or like some of our customers do, and just open it up enterprise-wide that you know really do take advantage of, of Microsoft Teams. It's available to you. Okay, cool. Wow. Okay, there are a lot of questions on roadmap. Um, so I think we'll probably um, use that as our last question because it's the one of, I, I keep constantly seeing this question in the Q&A manager. So let's, let's take some moment to address the elephant in the room. <laughs> I, this, this is a great elephant. Yeah. We have, we, you know, this is just we're very, very excited about our roadmap, and yeah. we're also like really eager to share it. And and so that's within the next two weeks, we have plans to share our full Teams roadmap. Yeah. And you'll see where we're innovating around intelligent communications. You'll see when you're, you know, at a different stage in your usage of Skype for Business today, you'll mm -hmm. be able to clean cleanly see when is the right time to move. So our roadmap, we, had, we announced at Ignite that we're planning to publish it in October. We are still absolutely planning to do that. And so you'll be able to go and get more information at that point in time to help you uh, determine when is exactly the right time for you and for your organization to get started with Teams. Yeah, 
So I, I think some of the things that people should expect to see is just like, as you alluded to, that what's the interoperability between Teams and Skype for Business? Um, when should I think about calling, inbound and outbound calling uh, from, our, from our PSTN network and what types of options that they'll be available? And then any advancements in terms of the meeting. And so just bringing meetings um, up to speed and start introducing that intelligent capabilities. I think that would be, um, that would be so awesome. Great. So, uh, Lori alluded two weeks, hopefully, in that time frame that we'll do that. When it's available, it'll be on the Office 365 roadmap, so we are going to make our roadmap public, um, and we'll do lots of communications around that, but especially as soon as the roadmaps come out, you can definitely tune back in to Teams on Air, and we'll actually have an episode that dedicated to how do you look, find the features on the roadmap, and then we'll highlight some, um, some key features, so make sure that you tune uh, back in for that. All right, Lori, I know you have to run, you have to, t you're, you're busy, and you have some other things to do, but I wanted to thank you for joining us. My absolute pleasure, yeah. great to be here. Yeah, will you be back? I will be back. Thank Anytime. you. All right, so um, don't forget to check out the five essentials of unified communications. It's a great ebook, it's a really quick read, and it's a great shareable resource to share with others in your organization. And uh, we'll be back on October 27th, the same time, same place at 9 a.m. And you can check us out at aka.ms slash teams on air. And also, um, don't forget to, uh, if you want to watch this on demand, to check us out at, on the replay and make sure that you comment and ask questions and so far. And, and I'd love to see you next time. So thanks, guys. Thanks, Lori. Thanks. Great to be here. All right.